There we go. All right, everyone. We are now joined by today's uh, final Dash for Cash winner this season, Anthony Alfredo, driver of the number five Dude Wipe Chevrolet for R Motorsports. Anthony, tell me what was going through your head kind of towards the end of that race, knowing that this was on the line. It was it was chaotic. You know, we came into this race knowing we were the underdog. I'm sure a lot of people ha ruled us out. Uh, we don't have any technical support no team alliance we're all by ourselves out there and uh, just doing a lot with a little we've been punching above our weight this year so we knew if we put ourselves in position you know who knows what could happen and in this case it was just about staying skid mark free thanks to dude wipe so we stayed out of trouble and uh we're able to be the first one there at the end out of everyone and i mean i think the the money is kind of overwhelming us this is crazy to win the dash for cash uh just because of what we were up against and we weren't as fast as xfinity internet today so um it was definitely a grind we even had to start at the rear just from a, a adjustment we had to make after qualifying so uh to come out here with a p9 is also a big deal a top 10 at a place like dover is huge for our team um, but obviously just big picture this this stash for cash means a lot to us uh super thankful for xfinity putting it on in the first place and um there's only four opportunities to do it a year and, and just to be a part of it was awesome let alone actually win it is still unbelievable awesome well if you have a question for anthony raise your hand we'll get a mic to you we'll start in the back with jeff Hey, Anthony, I mean, you know, obviously, like when some of these big teams win the hundred thousand dollars, I'm sure everybody wants hundred thousand dollars, but it doesn't have the same impact that it could have on a team like yours. I mean, what what could this mean, you know, for you guys getting more competitive, um, you know, reinvested back in the team? That's a great question. Honestly, with to be honest with you, coming into this race, uh, first of all, we're definitely going to have big team dinner, lunch, you name it, probably all of it this week. <laughs> but really coming into this race, that was our motivation. It wasn't just just something to be a part of and yeah we might win this and it doesn't really impact us i mean this is huge that you don't understand how small our budget is compared to these bigger teams and i think it's people overlooking it because we've been running so well the last three weeks we've run top 10 and the first question everyone asks me is who's your alliance with <laughs> it's funny it's like when we don't run well people are like well they're not supposed to they're a small team and then when you run well they won't accept the fact that we did so uh coming into this race we knew that if we could pull this off we can invest it into our team to be that much better so we have a lot of amazing partners that are already supporting us and, and growing with us. Uh, a lot of new stuff in the works, too, as far as sponsorships. And we even still have some openings, to be honest with you. So an opportunity like this in this race to be talked about, to win it, get this exposure will hopefully help the phone ring Monday morning. Um, but in all reality, yeah, it's going to help us improve our program, you know, just maybe buy some parts and pieces, build and tell their car potentially. We just have uh, a small shop with not a lot of stuff and not a lot of people, but we're all dedicated, hardworking, and want this more than anyone. Uh, yep, I'm Tropper Motorsports today. First off, uh, congrats on waving Dash for Cast. Um, but what does this say about you and your team overall, just the fact that you were able to win something like this. You touched on it a little bit, but you guys are hovering around 10th in points now, which is also very impressive, uh, which you said with no manufacturer support. So just what, what are the overall feelings about how you guys are running right now? It's awesome. Every week it's a confidence booster for sure. Uh, I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves, to be honest, when we do run well because we want to go back it up. Uh, you know, Today we didn't have uh, quite the speed we wanted. I, honestly, we might have been better than I thought. I think starting at the rear just hurt us. That track position is so big here. And once we cracked that top 15, I just kind of stalled out. I felt like I was still better than another three or four cars at least. But that's you know, a tenth or two here is not enough to just drive by someone. So I was searching around, looking for grip. I was one of the first to the top. I, I think I might have used my tires up there in that long run doing that, but it did get me some track position to help us late. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, for us, when we, when we aren't – uh, the best car, we just try to do our best to put ourselves in position late. And from there, it's about execution. Uh, in this case, staying out of trouble, having good restarts, and staying up front. And that's what we did. So we earned a top 10 and a big paycheck, which is really awesome. Now we just you know want to go do that again at Darlington. So at least we got off week two to rebuild because these, these last few weeks have been great. But at the same time, we're, we're spread really thin, and uh, we can just use this time to, uh, to get better. Awesome. Congrats again. Thank you. Any other questions for Anthony? We'll go back to Jeff and then Bob. 
Do you have any sense of, first of all, like how many how many employees does our have? At the shop, we have about 13 total, uh, and then we have you know our, our about seven guys at the track with us, uh, or, or eight guys at the track. So, um, just a couple guys back at the shop that are helping out, um, even some part-time people uh, just to help. Uh, we're just trying to build this up. You know, the biggest thing is scaling back uh, for our motorsports, scaling back to a one-car team. Um, and then, you know, them believing in me means a lot. We have all our eggs in one basket here, uh, but it's paying off. So we're just going to try to, you know, start small and, and grow bigger. And we're certainly off to a good start. And then just like, what's the mentality like racing in a situation like that where you're, you know, it's the sort of the classic trying to do more with less kind of thing and, and prove yourself. But, you know, a car can only go so, as fast as a car can go sometimes and you have to maximize it. So how do you how do you do that? That's a great question. Uh, I think, you know, I've been fortunate to have the opportunity when I came into the series to run a partial schedule with RCR and learn what really great equipment feels like. I, uh, you know, had zero practice or qualifying because of COVID. My resume consisted of 12 truck races and before that just late models in K&N. So very inexperienced with no track time prior to the green flag every week, you know, going to Darlington, going to old Atlanta, the crazy places, right? And uh, Man, I was running top five all the time at C-Mike, just made some rookie mistakes and was learning. Uh, I had about six six-place finishes, and here we are four years later, and I feel like I'm hanging my tongue out just to run top 15 some week. So um, that's just how it is, you know, with, the, with the, that variance in equipment. Uh, but that being said, I'm beyond thankful for every opportunity I've had. Uh, you know, that cup racing experience with Front Row Motorsports was complete trial by fire for me. <laughs> but it made me so much better when I came back to the Xfinity Series uh, with our Motorsports in 22. Drove for BJ McLeod last year full time and, and finished top 20 in the points, which I think is overlooked because people don't even realize how much smaller that operation was. And those opportunities have, first of all, made me way more grateful and thankful to be here every week um, and taught me how to maximize the equipment, to go back to your question, just about getting everything you can out of it. I think we've seen guys like Ross Chastain, for him, like he almost had to calm himself down when he got back in great equipment because you're used to running 110% every single lap just to try to keep up, you know, let alone run top 15, top 20, whatever it is. And, you know, we've been doing a great job with these top 10s and we, we plan to keep it up, but it's, it's not as easy as it looks. Um, you know, we're just up against so much on the equipment side. Um, and just, you know, no sim, like my, my, we don't have an engineer to run setups through the sim, so we're going to the track basically blind. You know, we're just putting a car on a pull down rig and trying to make it as good as we can uh, before we go. Uh, I don't get drivers sim time or anything. I know a lot of you know I do this sim driving for Hendrick Motorsports full time, but a next gen car, or I should say a cup car drives nothing like an Xfinity car anymore. <laughs> so that only does so much. Um, but, I, but all those little things have just helped me learn to execute on pit road, on restarts, and get every ounce out of these cars. Um, and that's what it takes to do a lot with a little. So that was a long answer. <laughs> I think you covered about everything. <laughs> Did I already answer your question, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I'm just like, can you tell me where, I mean, do you think feel like you're a playoff team? And, you know, what do you think just even just winning this dash for cash can do for your team as you kind of drive to see if you can make the playoffs? Well, we're certainly in position, and I think we've done everything we need to do as of late to make it. Uh, so we just got to keep doing what we've been doing, and we'll be a part of it. I think uh, if you sat down and went through all the teams and, and you know, res ranked them by resources, um, yeah, maybe, maybe we're not a playoff team. Um, but I think the effort and everything we've been putting in, we certainly deserve it. So we might not have the best stuff or all the resources everybody else has, but We've just been doing a better job, I think, at putting our heads down and going to work and um, trying to get better every single week. And it just is one race at a time for us. Um, I'm just so thankful for everyone working so hard, not giving up, because that's what it takes to be competitive at this level. And that's what it's going to take to make the playoffs. And like I said, if, if we keep it up, we will. So we're uh, definitely um, just going to keep surprising people, I think, this year. And a playoff appearance would certainly do just that. Any final questions? Go right there. Anthony Damcott, frontstretch.com. We've talked about 
you as a driver and our motorsports, the team, Dude Wipes has been a, a big uh, supporter in your career, really since your RCR days. Does having the support of them throughout switching from team to team and, and finally settling at a home in our, does having their support make achievements like the Dash for Cash that much sweeter? Yeah, it's awesome. You know, it's it's not just huge for our team. It's big for our partners, these opportunities. Um, you know, this is big for them this week. We had an awesome weekend last weekend. Third in the Xfinity race. They also were a primary sponsor of my Cup Series car with Beard Motorsports, where we finished sixth. So, tremendous weekend for, um, you know, big finishes for small teams last weekend. That, that was the mantra. Um, and to have dude wipes on the car both times was was big for them. And that's what this is all about, is, is growing these partnerships. Started off as a one-race deal, as you mentioned, at RCR, and we just – have just slowly grown over time we've grown together and that's what partnerships are all about you know mutually beneficial i think we've laid a really great path for people to look at uh, just you know laying a foundation for uh, motorsports partnerships because clearly it's been working for them uh, we just like i said have grown over time uh, they even picked up martinsville xfinity race you know as the title sponsor so this is like the dream partnership and we have a lot of other really great sponsors that um, not only have been with me time that we've grown but we have a lot of new stuff in the works um, and you know as we continue to grow that we're only going to get better and it's going to open up more opportunities because that's what it takes in this sport really uh, so I, I'm super blessed to have great people around me and, and awesome relationships with all these people. I know as of last year, I had the largest portfolio out of any driver, which is crazy because I don't drive for a team that has a gigantic marketing department getting sponsors every day. It's just myself and uh, Austin Craven at Team Dillon Management, who helps me a ton. Uh, Ken Berry, we've just been building great relationships, the three of us, and uh, doing it the old-fashioned way. Just by working hard every single week, every single day. Um, and that, that keeps me on track. So I'm very thankful. Awesome. Well, thank you, Anthony. Congrats again. Thank you, everyone.